Hey everybody, welcome back to day six of my transplant. Today, it's been an interesting day because I've had a few days where I haven't done any filming. And the reason behind that was if you watched my last video, you would have seen that my face was incredibly sort of swollen and nothing really changed over the last few days other than the swelling going down. And today you can see my face is kind of back to normal. I've got a little bit of swelling here, but it did state on the documentation, which was pretty accurate, that your swelling should go down by sort of day six. So here we go. So it is looking pretty good. And I'm just, I think another couple of days my face should be back to normal. In regards to my hair itself, um, I haven't had much scabbing really. Um, things you can see, I'll put some pictures as well at the back and front of my head. But I'm really, really pleased actually with how things have turned out by day six. Um, I haven't got any scabbing, I haven't had any bleeding. I haven't had that at all really since um, I've done the treatment. So I'm pleased about that and I'm pleased that I'm not in any kind of crazy pain and the swelling has gone down. That's the biggest thing for me. The swelling was a major concern. I was hated the way I looked and I'm happy that's now gone down. So other than that, today I want to talk to you about a some of the things that I've gone through this past few, this past week really, that you should be aware of. And also what I kind of answering some of your questions and answers that people have left comments in the last couple of videos. And again, thanks for following me. Thanks for your comments and questions. I do appreciate it. And I hope you found this useful as part of your journey if this is something you're intending to do. So first of all, the hardest thing for me has been sleeping. Without a doubt, that has been the hardest thing. Sleeping in an upright position for me does not work. And I've got another seven days of that. But luckily I can do that now on the bed rather than having to sit on my sofa, which was really horrible. I really didn't like doing that at all. Felt very alien sitting in my living room, just trying to get comfortable. And just, yeah, at nighttime being awake is just not a nice feeling. So that wasn't great. And anything you can do to mitigate that by maybe having a chair in a better room, maybe in your bedroom or something would be helpful. Um, it wasn't really an option for me, so I had to stay in the living room. So I hated that, didn't like that experience at all. Uh, one of the other things that I found quite tricky and just also almost hard to remember as well is every 30 minutes having to spray that saline solution that I showed you on the other videos on my head. That is, it's awkward, but it's also just annoying as well, especially in the winter, you're getting cold, you're getting wet water on you and it's just a bit of a horrible feeling, but it's only for seven days, I guess, but it does feel like a long seven days when, when you're spraying that every 30 minutes. They were my main sort of two concerns or problems, if you want to call it that, that I found difficult over the past period. And the other thing that I've noticed that happened about three days ago was that the donor area on my head started to feel like pain, but almost like a tingling sensation, a bit like it's burning, a bit of a burning sensation. That's probably the best way of explaining it. It felt a bit like it was burning. So I contacted the clinic and the clinic were really great saying that's completely normal and that you shouldn't do anything like putting like a cold compress on it or applying any creams or anything like that. They don't want to get any infection in the area. So for me, I had to just kind of, kind of grind and bear it really. And what I did was I kept spraying that area with the water and eventually today, for example, it's nowhere near as bad. But for the past sort of two to three days, I've noticed in the evenings especially, that seemed to get quite bad. The throbbing, like burning sensation. Uh, I think that's just part of the healing process. Obviously you've got a lot of nerves in the back of your head that have been you know, damaged through all this kind of, you know, well not damaged, but I guess affected by the treatment. So you've got to expect that kind of discomfort. And that did, it's difficult, especially at night when you're trying to sleep and you're in this upright position and your head's burning and you're kind of thinking, oh God, why do I go through this? But hopefully the, the outcome's going to be worth it. So that's the other thing that, kind of the three things really that were really, a, 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 I guess, an issue, if I'm going to call it that, over the past sort of six days. Other than that, I've been really good. My mental health has been pretty good. I was really concerned about not being able to go outside, not being able to go to the gym, but I've been keeping busy and I've been doing stuff, been doing a lot of reading, catching up with things that I needed to get on with. So for me, I think if you can plan ahead a bunch of stuff that you can do that doesn't involve you having to go outside, being exposed to sunlight, all that kind of stuff, being in the rain, all, 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 all those sort of things, things that you can do inside that can keep you busy and productive, if you're like me in that sense, um, or you might be the sort of person who just sit and watch TV. Again, that's great. But for me, I needed to be productive and have things planned. So I found that very, very helpful, having a plan of things I can do and things I can do on a daily basis to keep having a routine rather than not being completely out of routine. Now, in regards to some of the things I wanted to talk about, um, 
these are things that are mentioned for my surgery that I went through. And um, I'll talk about my surgery in a moment, but first of all, I wanna talk about things that you need to keep in mind that could affect you. Now, they recommend that you do not smoke. Now, for some people out there that you're a regular smoker, that could be a problem. So it's something I didn't talk about in the last couple of videos, but it does say smoking affects the outcome and it could have a, a kind of, they strongly recommend that you must stop smoking. So if you're someone that smokes and you're thinking about doing this particular treatment, uh, that's something you need to either stop or avoid before you start your treatment. So that's something worth thinking about. As I mentioned before, exercise is another big one. So swimming, you can't do for four weeks. You can't go to the gym um, or do it, sorry, any gym exercise like weight training for four weeks, any sports activity for four weeks, sexual activity, seven to 10 days, um, shaking the head or blowing the nose. Now I thought that was quite interesting because if you're doing this in the summer and you suffer from allergies and you're not allowed to take things like antihistamines. So you might wanna keep that in mind that you might wanna do this in a period of time where you're not sneezing or you haven't got cold or whatever i know it's hard to predict whether you have a cold or not but you have to keep in mind that it doesn't it recommends not blowing your nose uh, and moving your head violently so sneezing obviously is a, is a big no-no alcohol is for the first seven days you don't have to drink any alcohol and then it says driving for the first 48 hours so there's a few things that you you kind of need to avoid and so um that's one of the things obviously you saw from me i got this facial swelling I had a few people say to me on, on the comments in my videos that, oh, they never had any facial swelling. And I guess it's different for everybody, but on my documentation, it did say expect to have facial sw swelling, especially if you have treatment on the front of your head like I did. If you have it on the crown, you expect to have less swelling. So again, that's something to bear in mind. Also that you might decide that you might wanna wear a cap after a period of time. Well, they don't recommend wearing a cap until after seven days. So I could technically wear a cap tomorrow, but I don't think I would. I don't think I wanna to touch this area at all. I think for a good few weeks, you should probably not put anything on your head because it's very, very delicate, this particular area. So that's another thing to, to keep in mind. Infection, I did talk about this on my last video. It is spoken about a lot on the material that you should try to avoid getting the area infected. And this goes back to that whole idea of me saying about traveling. I don't think traveling is a good idea when you've had this treatment. You've effectively got a large area on the back of your head that's got severe trauma and wounding uh, that needs to heal. And touching it or going out in dirty air or going into an area like a plane, for example, uh, or a bus or public transport where there's highly high rate of infection, I think it's not a good idea to, to do those sorts of things. So that's for me personally, I think it's a, a, an idea to avoid that. And, and I've had also had people messaging me in the comments saying, you know, you spent 5K on this, you could have gone to Turkey and had an amazing treatment and all the rest of it. And maybe that's true, but for me personally, I don't wanna to go to Turkey after the last six days I've been through. Doing that at home was bad enough. Trying to do that in a foreign country and then traveling on top of it, I don't think that would have been a good idea. For me personally, that's just my personal choice. You might be fine with that and think actually you're happy to take the risk. For me, I would rather pay more and do it in the UK and be able to come home and be comfortable rather than having to worry about cross infection and all that kind of stuff. It's just not worth it for something like this that's fairly major that you are spending a lot of money for. So that's personal preference. Again, you might decide that's better for you, but I think personally it's kind of, I would rather do something where I am in control. I can go back to that surgery and I can you know, discuss any problems I might have. If I got infected, I can go and see them straight away. That to me is peace of mind. And I think that's important when you go through something fairly stressful. One of the things to keep in mind as well is that the hair that you've currently got or the hair transplant the way mine looks right now is not the way it's gonna look in a few months or weeks. This hair is expected to fall out. It does say that, that they say to you that the hair you've got now will fall out over time, but it will regrow. And that regrowing will take around about 11 to 15 months to get your hair fully as it should. So keep that in mind that what you see is not what you get. This hair isn't gonna grow and I'm gonna be able to style it and it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna fall out and I expecting that. And over time that hair will grow back. So it's something not to be kind of freaked out about when you see your hair falling out because it's expected. Uh, but the roots are still there and the hair will grow back. Another thing I thought about talking about is your work. Now for me, I work from home and Luckily for the next few weeks, I don't have to go back into work. So I've taken that time off. But on the material that we got given or I got given, it says that you should take a, at least one week off work. 
Now, one week is enough for you to get into the position that I'm currently in. Hopefully you'll be in that position where you look pretty okay, but you're still not 100% right and you might have to go into work tomorrow. Now, if you've got a job that requires manual labor or you're outside a lot in the sun or you are lifting and carrying or you're in a busy place where you could potentially knock your head, I think you need to be, well, really consider that before doing this sort of treatment because if you're sat at home in front of a computer, that's one thing. You might have some personal preferences about what people see or how you look. But if you're outside, one of the things it does say is to mention direct sunlight. It also mentions to avoid wind and rain. So if you're out in a busy environment, maybe you work on a building site or something like that, maybe this may not be the treatment for you unless you take further time off. One of the other questions I got asked was how painful were the injections? Well, I guess pain is subjective. I think I've got pretty good pain threshold. I've done a lot of martial arts and yeah, I've done things in the past where I've had to put my body through pain. But the kind of pain that you do or go through with the injections are very sharp pains. They only last a few seconds, well, less than that really. They're each prick is like, a, it's a sharp feeling. But because there's quite a lot of injections, it's hard to say how it's gonna feel for you. Now, the ones at the back of my head were fairly painful for a few seconds, but the area gets numbed quite quickly. So when I mentioned in the video, I had about 30 to 35 injections. Well, a lot of those I couldn't feel because the area was already numb. It was adding to that area, so I didn't feel them. But initially, the initial injection, yes, it does hurt. It's an injection. It's going into an area of your head that's quite delicate and sensitive. The ones on the front of your head hurt a lot more. So they, for me personally, did hurt a lot more because they're in this area here, which is very, very sensitive. And the first maybe four or five injections were quite sharp. But I said, they'll only last a couple of seconds and the rest of the treatment, you're absolutely fine. So don't be too nervous about that, especially someone that doesn't like injections. Um, all I can say is yes, they hurt, but they're not too bad compared to the whole procedure. And bear in mind you're there for like several hours. Mine lasted from about eight o'clock in the morning to about half past three in the afternoon. So you're there for a long period of time. Now, during my uh, treatment, my doctor said to me, if you feel a bit of pain or you feel it's sharp to let me know. And when I did feel a couple of times during the process that I felt, oh, that felt a little bit tender, they gave me further injections to numb that area. So keep that in mind as well, that you may have further injections depending on what you feel as the treatment's being done. Next question I got asked was, how many grafts did you have? Now, on the day they mentioned to me when I went for my initial consultation, I'd get a probably about 1,900 sort of grafts around that number. And when I had my treatment, I got about 2,000 grafts. I think it was just about 2010 or 2011, something like that. So I got a few more than I needed, um, which was great. And that's what they managed to implant. Now I've got my implantation, you can see mostly on the front of my head. And as I mentioned on my last video, um, a crown implantation, so on the back, you'd have to have further treatment. Depending on the area that you're being like taking the donation from, the donor area will depend on whether you can, you know, how many grafts you get. So my clinic mentioned to me, they said, look, we'll take as many as is needed to, to cover the area that we want to cover. And that's what they did. And I'm very happy with how it looks. I'm also very, very pleased actually with the hairline because I wanted my hairline to look very natural. And I think once this grows out, it's going to look great for my age. So I said, I'm 44 years old. I didn't want my hairline to be too low. And one of the things I've seen especially from friends that have had this done in Turkey, is that their hairlines don't look great. They look bad. They don't look quite right because the hairline's been drawn far too low down and it doesn't look right to your eyes. So when you're looking at them, it's hard to explain, but if you have a look at videos or pictures of people with hair transplants, some of them look really good and some of them don't look quite right. And it's not because they're not thick enough, it's because the hairline doesn't look right. It doesn't look quite right for your eyes. And when you're looking at it, your brain's telling you something isn't quite right. So I'm hoping mine's gonna look fine because it's actually quite a natural hairline to the one I had before I had my hair transplant. Uh, and they've kept it in line with that, which I'm really, really pleased about. So hopefully it'll look quite good. So one of the big questions that I got asked by lots of people was which clinic did you use? Well, the clinic that I used was called Hillside Hair Clinic. And they're a small clinic based in Nottingham, but they also have clinics in like Harley Street and in Manchester, etc. And they're the one that I decided to go with because purely on the research that I did, 
bearing in mind I also wanted to be local and they happened to have a branch here local to me, um, that I decided that they were a good fit. Now they had good reviews and I had a good feeling from when I spoke to the initial consultation through to speaking to the doctor and also going through with the actual operation itself. Now that was me personally and I'm saying that I'm not giving any recommendations that you should go to them. All I'm saying is for me personally, they seem to fit the bill for what I needed. And I think whenever you're gonna to go to any clinic, you should do your own research. I mean, I got asked the question, you know, do you think they're the best clinic? Well, I, I, don't, I can't say that. I don't know if they're the best clinic. I just know that they were good for my needs and they ticked all the boxes. And in general, I thought they were very, very good. Now, are they the cheapest? I've got no idea. Are they the most expensive? I've got no idea. As I said, mine was about 5,000 pounds. And for the job that they did, and I'm very happy so far with the results, I think they did a great job. Now, with that in mind, um, I contacted the clinic and mentioned to them about referrals, seeing if you guys can get anything for free. So if you mention, if you do go to Hillside Health Hair Clinic, Mark's Honest Reviews, um, and you may get something for free, uh, potentially as a, a bit of a discount from, for following my channel. Um, but that's still under discussion and I'm talking to the clinic about that and it may change later on, but I will leave a link or some comment below in description to let you know a little bit more about that if that's something that you wanna do. So that is it from me. I hope you found these videos useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please subscribe to my channel if you found this content helpful to you and give it a thumbs up. If you've got anything you want to ask me, leave them below. I will be doing further videos, but they'll be further spread out. So when I've got something to talk about or something I might find useful, have a look in the description area. I'll have useful information and links there that you might find helpful. I'll also leave links to the things that I've purchased over the past seven days that I found helpful to me to help me through this transition and this kind of post-surgery period. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next video.